Hi, uh, can I get a uh, pulled pork burrito in a meal, please? Pulled pork burrito? Yeah. Spicy or mild? Uh, spicy, please. Yeah, would you like it in a meal? Yes, please. Regular or small? Um, regular. Need your drink, sir? Thank you. Oh, I've got the drink already. Thank you. Hey Spark, how's it going? I am filming this on Monday, today, at lunchtime, because I filmed it last night, um, and when I watched When I watched it back, I looked like I was half asleep and I didn't make a lot of sense all the time. So I thought I'm going to redo that in the morning. So I am about to have lunch and I'm pulled over in my mum's car, by the way. You may notice the kids seats in the back. They're not my seats. I don't have kids seats in my car, but uh, my car's in um, the other mechanic getting fixed long story. Anyway, I've got my mum's car today. I'm stopped. I'm having some lunch and I'm going to chat to you now. Um, so yesterday in the church Zoom, Tina Baker spoke about worship and she told a few stories. Um, so she told a few stories from the Bible and she talked a bit about them and she talked about a few stories from her own life. But um, I just wanted to focus on one of the stories she spoke about. And I'm going to tell you that story and talk a little bit about how it links to worship. Because when she told this story, I remembered it and I was like, that's a, that's a great story. And you don't hear it that much. It's not one of the, well, I guess you do. I don't know. I hadn't heard anyone speak about this particular Bible story for quite a while. So I thought I'd talk about it today and then talk a little bit about worship. So, um, in the Bible, in the New Testament, um, in the book of Acts, chapter 16, well, let's start a little bit before that. So, in the, in the New Testament, after Jesus dies and goes, rises again, goes back to heaven, all these followers start sort of becoming the church, as we know it today, I suppose. They become Christians and they start going around telling people the good news about Jesus. Um, and two of the guys who were doing that were named Paul and Silas. Um, you probably know that Paul used to be Saul, became Paul when he was converted to Christianity on the um, out on the road. He was an angel appeared to him. He was blind. Anyway. He became a Christian, he became Paul, and he was telling, he went around telling people about Jesus. And he had a friend named Silas. Now, in this particular story, in chapter 16, Paul and Silas were traveling around. They went from country to country, different countries, telling people about Jesus. And um, at a certain in a certain city, they ran into this slave woman, and this slave woman was a fortune teller. And she made a lot of money by telling people's fortunes. Fortunes. She made a lot of money by telling people's fortunes. And her owners would get that money, obviously, because she was a slave. But that was what she did. She'd sat, sit in this city and she'd tell people's fortunes and they'd pay her for it. And she'd give the money to her boss, or her owners. Um, anyway, when Paul and Silas, you know, wandered past her... She was like, these men work for the one true God. They know how to, how they can tell you how to be saved. Stuff like that. And now, and then she followed them and continued to yell this stuff out to everybody around. Hey, everybody, these guys know the one true God. These guys can help you get saved. And that, to me, that sounds like a good thing. It sounds like free advertising, but apparently she just followed them yelling this stuff out for days, days and days. And they got uh, sick of it. They got kind of annoyed. You can imagine it would get annoying. It's just like, all right, for goodness sake, be quiet. 
but she didn't. She kept yelling stuff out. And eventually, Paul turned to her and said, in the name of Jesus Christ, spirits be gone. And he cast the spirit, the spirit out of her. And she was left just a normal woman. Now, that's a good thing. She could just, she had her life back. But, as I said before, she was a slave. Her owners, not happy about this. They were annoyed because they were going to lose significant income due to the fact that their slave woman could no, never, no longer tell people's fortunes. It was just, she, she was just a normal run-of-the-mill run woman now, no extra earning abilities, and this was not good in their books, um, you know, economically speaking. Anyway, the owners were grumpy, mad about this, so they grabbed Paul and Silas, and they took them, um, I don't know, sort of like a citizen's arrest sort of thing, dragged them to the court, or where people got judged, and um, told the judges and whatever, these guys, they're Israelites, they've come into our country, into our town, they're making a huge mess of everything, they're ruining everything, they're, they're bringing unlawful customs for their own lands and ruining things. Basically, they just told them whatever they could to make it sound like Paul and Silas were bad news. And the crowd joined in. The crowd was like, yeah, yeah, these guys are the worst. Get rid of them. Like, they're no good. Blah, blah, blah. And eventually, the the judges were like, all right, fine, fine, fine. Um, strip them. Beat them. You know, like, um, I think in the Bible it says they were severely beaten. And then throw them in jail. So this happened. And they... they handed Paul and Silas over to the jailer and they said, keep an eye on this guy, keep a good eye on these guys because they're bad news. So the jailer popped him in jail. Anyway, fast forward a few hours, midnight that night, Paul and Silas are like in the jail praying and worshipping God and singing hymns, sort of church songs and stuff almost having their own little church service. And a lot of the other prisoners were like listening in, like, what's this about? Listening to what they had to say as well. And then, all of a sudden, there was an earthquake. And the foundations of the jail were sh shaken. All the doors popped open. The shackles on their feet, shackles are like, um, like handcuffs, sort of except around your feet, and they were bolted to the floor of the jail. Like, yeah, so you couldn't run away, basically. You bolted in with these shackles on a chain to the floor. Anyway, they all, like, were released as well and broke off the floor. And suddenly, the prisoners were free. At this point, the jailer woke up. I don't know if the earthquake woke him or what. But the jailer woke up and was looked around. Oh, no. He realizes all the jail is unlocked, all the doors are open, and he freaked out. He's like, oh no, how what? How could this happen? He was freaking out. He knew he was going to be in huge trouble if he let all the prisoners go. Um, so he grabbed his sword and he was about to kill himself because he's like, I can't deal with this. Oh, wild overreaction. But like, he was going to kill himself and suddenly out of the darkness, out of the prison cells came Paul's voice and he said no nope, don't harm yourself don't do anything rash we're all still here and the jailer was like what so he popped into the jail cell and sure enough all the prisoners were there waiting and he was amazed and he, he went over to Paul and Silas and he was like how has this happened what are you doing? Why are you waiting here? And he realized that the only re reason people would do that is if they knew a real God and would do something like that. Stay honest and wait for him and not get him into trouble. So he said, who is this God that you know? And they, so they told him about Jesus and, and God. And he took them home to their, his own house and he fed them and he cleaned them up. And then he Paul and Silas spoke more to him and his whole family, actually, his whole household, talked to them all about Jesus and how they could be saved. And 
his whole family, he and the jailer and all his family became Christians. They were all saved. Now, this is an interesting story for a lot of reasons. One, because Paul and Silas were doing the right thing. They were doing good things. They were doing the Lord's work and they still got arrested and for something that was really not... I mean, they, they, they cast a spirit, evil spirit out of a woman. It's not a bad thing. And they were tried unfairly. They were thrown into prison unfairly. They were beaten. And yet still, that night, they were holding a church meeting. They were praying and singing praise songs to God. And then, and then there's an earthquake, and suddenly they're pretty much pretty well set free, and yet they wait around to make sure everything works out properly. They stay, because it would be the wrong thing to do to run away. Again, it's very strange, like an odd decision, as if you wouldn't run for the hills as soon as you got the chance. But no, they stayed. And because they did all that... Sorry, I got a phone call right then. Anyway... Because they did all that, because they were doing God's work, and they stayed faithful, and they kept they they kept praising God even when things got really tough, and they kept doing the right thing even though they seemed like life was going all wrong. They said, "No, we'll trust in God, we'll obey God, and we'll keep doing what God wants us to do." They were able to bring a whole family to Christ, a whole fam show a whole family who Jesus was. And by the way, after that, um, the next morning, the judges were like, oh, we can't really keep these guys because they haven't really got any basis to hold them in jail. So we better let them go. And then Paul and Silas was like, well, that's fine, but you shouldn't have arrested us anyway because we're Roman citizens. You're not allowed to just throw us in prison without, uh, you know, evidence and cause and stuff. And they're like, what? You're Roman citizens? Oh my goodness. And everything got a bit out of hand, but they eventually got set free and let go and they were free to go on their way. Sorry. Um, my phone rang again. And it cuts off the video immediately. you think hanging up on the guy twice would give, give him the idea. But no, he kept calling me back. Anyway, I've talked to him now. Job sorted. Um, so, where was I? I think I just finished telling you about the end of the story where they were set free. I think so. Anyway, so what does this story have to do with worship? Well, worship is more than just like singing a song in church. That's what we often think of when we talk about worship in church. We talk about singing worship songs. But worship isn't the songs. That Worship is giving glory to God. We sing praise songs to worship God, but also... We should live to worship God. Everything we should do should be giving glory to God. And with that in mind, you should try your best at everything you do because you want your life to give glory to God. You want to obey God. You want to give everything you've got to God. That's what we aim for as Christians, right? And so this story shows people who do that who are sold out, they're giving their life to God, they're traveling around the world in a time, you know, Bible times, it can't be that nice to travel around the world. I wouldn't have thought, you don't, there's no like, they're not, they're not like, they're not traveling around on first class airline tickets. It would be difficult to travel around that much back then, I, I would imagine. And they're, but they are, they're doing it and they're telling everyone they can who Jesus is and how Jesus can save them. And then everything goes wrong for them. They're unfairly tried. They're beaten, severely beaten. They're thrown in prison. We've t I've told you all this. Ter it all went wrong. And yet they still live their life worshipping God. They don't freak out too much. They hold a prayer meeting like in the prison at like midnight. And they tell the other prisoners about Jesus. These are lives that are worshipping God through the thick and through the thin. That's basically what I wanted to tell you guys this week. It's an interesting story to think about and it's a challenge I think.
to try and you live your life, even when you're in a bad spot, even when things aren't going well, when you're at school and stuff seems to be unfair, trying to live in, trying to live in a way that still honors God and gives the glory to God in those kind of situations can be hard. But if you do it, people start to see that there's something about you and there might be some truth to this about God. If, if God can help you live that way, maybe there's something to think about. And that's what happened with the jailer when he saw how Paul and Silas were acting. And the same thing will probably happen to you if like people see that you're reacting in a godly way even when you're in a bad situation. That's just my thoughts. Have a think about yourself. Let me know what you think. I hope you guys have a good week. Um, oh, just quietly, just quickly. I did uh, do a video last week and put it up on my YouTube channel to for you guys to watch, but then I forgot to link it to the Spark group. So I'll post this video um, this afternoon and I will then post last week's video at some point. So if you want to check that out as well. Go for it. Um, yeah, I'm going to eat my lunch now, guys. Have a good one. Bye.